Okay. Um, Doc Brown, I told you, had me thinking over the last few days when he um, gave that nugget a while back asking, what are you what wearing? Are you wearing? Mm -hmm. um, we get caught up in clothes and stuff like that. Whether we want to believe it or not or admit it or not, we're big on appearance. We're big on appearance. I was messing with my my daughter the other day. My wife did her hair. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I'm like, yo, you got to make sure you keep that stuff looking like that instead of that bouffant you had on your head a couple of days ago. Um, of course, she looked at me like I was crazy. But um, I, I, I think about that how... Um, we're big on appearance. And one of the things that we're big on is the clothes that we wear. And, and I got what dad was talking about when he said, um, mm -hmm. what you're wearing. Yesterday, I talked about being clothed in righteousness. I talked about that. But today, I'm going to give you a scripture. It's a historical scripture, okay? It's, this is history right here. So I don't know if I got any history buffs. Um, on the call, but I know uh, my youngest is on the call, and she's big on she's big on Black history. She's big on, this. um, but she's big on history. So I'm gonna give you one, a piece of history, out of the Bible. Okay, um, Exodus 28 and two. Um, this is instructions from the Father. It says, "Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity." and honor. I want y'all to think about that. I know I ain't said a whole lot, but I want you to think about it. I'm going to say it again. Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. Um, We have a skilled <clears throat> seamstress that's in the Rock of Refuge family. Um, her name is Emma Dixon. Uh, I've known her for some years now. Emma's in her 90s now. Not only can she sew, but she makes the most amazing dolls. I mean, dolls like like porcelain dolls and dolls. Um, I have clothing items um, as well as dolls that this lady has created. Uh, one of the coolest things she ever created and passed along to me and my family and I haven't seen it in a while, but I know me and my wife still have it, is this coat called an Underground Railroad Coat. Um, in my living room, she made this doll that stands about, I don't know, two feet. Buffalo Soldier, dressed up in the cavalry garb and everything else. But it's that coat I want to talk about. That Underground Railroad Coat, it has a lot of patches on it. And each patch tells a story of uh, the Underground Railroad. The purpose of the coat is to preserve the dignity and the honor of our people. And, and, and like that Underground Railroad coat, the garments <laughs> worn by Aaron and his descendants were made by skilled workers. God didn't just have anybody make it, okay? And you can look that up in Exodus 28 and three. God's instructions for the priestly attire included details that told the collective story of Israel. So this coat was the predecessor to the Underground Railroad coat. And on this coat, this Sister Belinda, it included Engraving the names of the tribes on onyx stones that would sit on the priest's shoulder as a memorial before the Lord. Look at verse 12 when you see that, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Then you got the tunics, mm -hmm. the embroidered sashes, mm -hmm. and the caps gave the priest. When they put all that stuff on, God said it was to give them dignity and honor as they served God and led the people in worship. That's verse mm -hmm. 40. Now I'm about to shake things up here right about now. Um, we see a lot of this even in um, our churches today. 
we have certain people that lead services and it's necessary for them to wear garments that give them honor. I'm just gonna say honor, okay? Mm -hmm. I left the, I left the dignity piece out, y'all. Don't get mad at me, okay? Well, you have to come on. We got, you know, it is something to be able to wear that robe. It really means something to be able to put that collar on around the neck. Not everybody gets to wear the collar, so I'm gonna wear the collar so you know that. Say, come on. I am well deserving of the honor. Um, but but um, I'm I'm about to shake the card up right here. Right. As new as new covenant believers in Jesus, all of us. It doesn't matter what the title is. There, <clears throat> all of us are a priesthood. Somebody, yeah. somebody, somebody ain't yeah. getting that. Y'all waiting on somebody. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, right. All of us are yeah, right. serving God, and we're supposed to be, I say all of us, right? Yes. Leading people <clears throat> and leading each other in worship. Now, yes. someone's saying, Brown, you talking, but can you back that up by scripture? <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me nothing like that because if I ain't been ordained Ooh. by Bishop so and so, or you ain't been, you can't say that you a priesthood. All right. On your own time. I y'all know this off the top of your head, but I'm gonna say on your own oh, time. Come on. Go to first Peter chapter Six. two, read verses <laughs> four and five, and then skip to verse nine. And that will that will back up everything that I said. When I said that all of us are priesthood serving God and we're supposed to be leading each other in worship. Why do y'all think so many mornings I sit here and just let y'all go for it? Y'all don't need me. So, so, so Hebrews 4 and 14 tells us that, you know, even though we're, pre we're the priesthood, he is the high priest. And even though some find it needed in church and in society, we don't need to wear any particular clothing to identify ourselves as priests. Oh man, somebody mm -hmm. gonna agree with me. Wait till I post this message. Oh my goodness. So, so with the Lord's help, Colossians 3 and 20 says this thing. This is what we ought to be putting on. My dad says, what are you wearing? That's what he said in his message, right? Someone's saying, Brown, what does a priest wear in this day and time? What should the priests wear in this day and time? Somebody want to know? I'm so glad you're asking me. Brown, what does a priest wear in these days and times? Colossians 3 and 12 says we are to close ourselves with these things. Compassion. Yes. Kindness. Humility. Gentleness. And patience. Yeah. yeah. That's, how you, that's how I can tell. A real man and woman of God right there. Compassion. Mm -hmm. Kindness. <clears throat> humility. Gentleness. And patience. But now, nah, but you know what we do though instead? We're so caught up in robes, collars, tabs, mm -hmm. scepters, poofy hats. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can just go on and on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is this morning, if you are a royal priesthood, outside of the whole armor, if you want folks to recognize you <laughs> and, and, and see you in a place of honor and dig oh, dignity is the peace. See, I left the dignity out earlier, y'all. Y'all know when I was talking this stuff. <laughs> dignity and honor, then make sure you put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If you put that on, you too, just like Aaron and his descendants, will be walking in dignity and honor.